Hey everybody, Matt here at AVC. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're gonna get this van powered up. It's time to pre-wire. Let's grab a download and hit the books. I'll see you in the office. Our first step is going to be outline all the amenities we're gonna be installing in the van. So let's just go ahead and make a laundry list of all the different things that are gonna need power in our build-out. So with our list of all of our amenities in place, I've organized them by their locations. So things that are all gonna go in our control panel at our overheads are grouped together. Electrical that's going to our kitchen is grouped together and any electrical going to our utility cabinet near the water pump is also grouped together. In the future, we're gonna group these wire bundles together when we make our pre-wire runs in the van. Now that we have our list, let's go ahead and start drawing those items on the map. So we're gonna have our heater here under the front seats. We're gonna have our kitchen on our driver's side in front of that window. Okay, so our fridge is going here. Our sink is going on this side. We're gonna have our utilities and our water on our driver's side rear utility. So I'm gonna write water here. That means our power is gonna be across the van in the opposite utility. This is power. And we're gonna be using a Goal Zero 3000X. Let's not forget our fan on the roof. It's gonna be central here. Anything that's gonna go in my overheads, I like to use the edge of the template along here so that I remember those are going up on the side of the van but not down there on the floor. So these are gonna be all my things to my overheads, which is gonna be my light power, maybe some USBs up there, my heater control wire. I always run an auxiliary. Oh, and we have a pump switch going up there as well. In the back here and next to our water cabinet, we're gonna have our water pump. We're gonna want a USB at our bed, and we're gonna want a reading light at the back. We also want a reading light on our passenger side. Uh, and the one I always forget is our cargo crossover. That's for our cargo lights on our utilities. And at the back of the van, I'm gonna need my cargo light switch. And I like to add a 12 volt here as well to pump up paddle boards, things like that. On the front of my kitchen, I'm gonna have a 110 outlet and a USB outlet. And of course our vehicle charge wire. With our template filled out, we're ready to jump into the van and start taking some measurements. So first things first, let's take our power map and let's transfer that to the walls of the van. So my control panel location over here, I can just write right on the wall, control panel, and then we can write the items that we're gonna power from our control panel area. So that's gonna be our light power, our USBs, our auxiliary, we always wanna run an auxiliary. We're gonna run our heater control and our reading lights on our driver's side. Now let's go ahead and transfer those power needs across the entire van. With our locations marked in the van, we're ready to start taking some measurements for our wire runs. So we could use our tape measure, measure from our power station up to our roof line, across the ceiling and to our control panel. But there's an easier way. So let's set our tape measure aside. Uh, we're gonna use something that everybody has, arm lengths. So as an example, I'm gonna show you how I measure from my power source to my control panel. So it's going to be one arm length from power station to the roof line, one arm length across the van. Then I wanna have excess wiring at my destination. So I would account for one half of an arm length at my destination and half an arm length at the origin. So if I have one to the top, two across, then I need a half here and a half there, it's gonna be three arm lengths. So I'm just gonna write that down on my sheet. Light power is three. If I'm putting a USB and an auxiliary and my reading lights, those are all going to be three arm lengths. So three, three, three. Now we can do this for the rest of the power locations in the van. So if we're going to be wiring to a different location in the van, we can add it up again by arm lengths. So I want to bring power from my goal zero station here all the way across the van to my water pump. So in order to do that, I need to go from my goal zero, one arm length to the roof line, two across, three down below, and four back to my water pump. So I'm going to pull five arm lengths of wire so that I have a half a length on each end of that wire run. With our locations and our wire distances in mind, we can now select the appropriate wire gauge for each appliance. Because you and I are gonna be using different appliances in our van, the best thing for you to do is double check your appliance and see its power needs. Then we can cross-reference the lengths of wire with a voltage drop chart to decide on the appropriate wire gauge for our appliances. As a standard here in the shop, most of our runs can be completed with 12 gauge, 14 gauge, or 16 gauge. 14 is gonna be our main workhorse here in the van, and we're gonna use the 12 gauge wire for some of the heavier demand appliances. Let's jump to our chart and let's fill in the appropriate wire gauge for each appliance. Light power is gonna be 14. 
USB is going to be 14. Auxiliary overhead is going to be 14. This is going to be a data cable. Reading lights are going to be 14. Our fridge is going to be a 12. Our USB at the kitchen is going to be a 14. Our fan is going to be a 14. Our driver's side bed USB is going to be a 14. Our pump power is going to be a 12. Our pump switch is going to be a 14. And our cargo crossover is going to be a 16. 110 at the kitchen is going to be its own 110. With our lengths and gauges filled out on our chart, we're ready to start pulling wire. So let's make a pile in the van for each destination we're going. So I'm going to start with my control panel, and I'm going to start pulling each wire for the control panel. Here in the shop, most of the wires that we run are going to be this 100% copper, oxygen-free speaker wire. It comes in a white jacket, so it's really easy to label, and with the red and black, all of our home runs and everything are complete and ready to go. So let's measure out our light power wire. If I check my chart, it's going to be three arm lengths and 14 gauge. So I have my 14 gauge. We're going to make three arm lengths. One, two, three. With my wire cut, I'm going to label each end for its destination and appliance. Light power, con panel, okay, and then light power, and C, P for control panel. Then I'm going to put this in a pile on the floor. I'm going to measure all the same wires that go to that location so I can bundle them together. As I'm pulling this wire, it reminds me, it's really smart to run an auxiliary leg to each destination in the van. So if I'm pulling wire up to my control panel, I always run an auxiliary or two. And for just that purpose, we started stocking a 14-4, which means it's four wires inside at 14 gauge. So I use this as my auxiliary runs to different locations in the van. Then in the future, if I need to add a new appliance, if I forgot something, it's there, it's some cheap insurance. So it's a good idea to include in your build. We now have all of our wire runs that are going to our control panel cut and labeled. So I'm gonna grab all of those wires together and we're gonna start making a loom out of them. Before we do that, we're gonna pull out a couple of the wires that are gonna continue from this location to a different spot. One of those is our driver's side reading light and it's gonna go at the back so I'm going to just grab my driver's side reading light, and it's going to go an arm length back to the van. So I'm just going to grab this side and pull one arm length out. So let's go ahead and tape these up. So now all these wires are going to come up here and stop at my control panel, and my driver's side reading light is going to continue on and go to the back of the overheads and supply power to my reading lights. Now I'm going to put a little loop of tape about every three feet along this loom to keep the wires together as I loom it into our protective sleeve. With our wires bundled, we're ready to cut some protective sleeves to make pulling our wires to its desired location easier and give us a little bit of extra protection. One, two, three. Another quick thing that'll make it easier to pull these wires through is go ahead and tape any ends of those wires in so that as you feed, they're not going to get stuck on anything else. There we go. Now we're ready to start pulling this through the wall. With our wire loom ready to run, we want to think about what direction we're going to be running from. Because this control panel loom has a couple extraneous things splitting off from this side, it's going to be easier to pull from this side back to my power station because everything needs to come back to the power station. If I pulled it up from the power station the opposite direction, I'd be dealing with additional lines coming off in different directions. it just make it a little more cumbersome. Let's start with our longest wire that's connected to this loom. We're going to feed it up behind our ceiling to wall brace, and we're going to go through some of those pre-wire holes that we did in a previous video. So we're going to feed it through there, over the top of that brace, then we're going to continue over the top of our ceiling supports. And again, over the top of our support. Across the opposite side, and let's move some wire. Making sure I have enough room here to power my control panel. So this wire you see popping off to the side is our fan wire. I'm just going to pull that out and leave it across the ceiling, then pick up the rest of my loom, feed it over the top of my support, through one of those holes, down to my wall. From here, I'm going to go through one of the holes right here, 
Then, through one of the holes here that I've drilled, through my lower section, out of my wall, and close to my power station. We'll just tie those two together and make sure we don't forget. With this loom zip tied in place, I'm gonna repeat the process for my kitchen and my water wire runs. Let's do it. With our final wire runs installed, we can throw a few zip ties in place to manage our cables and keep things from vibrating too bad. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button so others can find it. And if you haven't yet, it's time to subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. And we are job done. <laughs> <laughs> we are English speakers, good. <laughs>